Hi, my name is Taylor D, and I'm an active poster over at the Jace Main subreddit. Feel free to check it out if you want to learn more about Jace play. I've considered myself a Jace Main since about early Season 3 when Mira Mana came out, and while I'm not exactly a high elo player myself, I have played enough Jace to learn all of his intricate mechanics. Jace has a very high skill cap. I'd say it's up there with Lee Sin and Riven in terms of mechanics. He can abuse animation cancelling, input buffering, flash buffering, and various other techniques. Skip to later in the video if you only want to see the advanced mechanics. I'm going to start off with some of the basics so even non-Jace players can understand the more advanced things. First off, you can get a fast auto attack after your Q and melee stance. This is key to use during combos. You want to use your abilities in between your auto attacks. This will help you a ton in the early game when you want to maximize your damage output when trading with your lane opponent. You can use hypercharge to reset your auto attack, allowing you to get 4 basic attacks in a short duration. You can use your hypercharged auto attacks in hammer stance. This is useful for some burst combos. While your Q in melee stance is a targeted ability, it does area of effect damage and slow. You can target a minion near an enemy to extend its range. Most people know that you can use your acceleration gate after shock blast to speed up the combo. But if you place the gate really close to Jace, you can speed up the combo even more, making it a little harder to dodge. You can use acceleration gate to get vision in unwarded areas. You can use this vision with melee Q to jump over walls to minions or enemies. Now that you know these techniques, let's look at how to use them in skill combos. First is your standard combo. You want to start with your accelerated shock blast combo, then use your hypercharge with 3 auto attacks, bonus if you can use the auto reset for a fourth, transform in a hammer stance, run through your gate, Q onto them and immediately auto attack, then finish the combo off with your knockback. This is how it should normally look. And this is what it looks like with the auto reset and an extra auto at the end. Here's an in-game example. Here's an example where you can use your hypercharge before your shock blast combo. This combo is similar to your standard combo, except you use all your hypercharged auto attacks in melee form. This is a more bursty combo. Use this when you don't need your full combo to kill someone. Your melee engage combo is basically just a reverse of your standard combo, except you start out in hammer stance. Use this combo when you want to start a fight with the enemy. It allows you to shoot your shock blast at close range so they cannot hide behind minions or dodge you. Your melee EQ combo involves you knocking someone back and then jumping onto them in an attempt to gain a better position or escape a situation. Among other top laners. Wait, it's not the worst, man. When the health's nice. Oh, dice is going off, dude. What the fuck? You can use variations of different combos to better fit your situation. Now we'll move on to the more advanced techniques. If you have the mechanics for it, you can kite between your hypercharged auto attacks. Every bit of distance counts when Fizz is trying to kill you. You can cast Acceleration Gate vertical to your champion, allowing for an extra second of movement speed boost. When taking blue buff, you can kite it around and take very little damage. This clip is at level 4 with only a Dorn's Blade. 
Beyond level 6, you can take it solo with almost no health lost. You can get an auto attack off during your E's knockback animation. If you auto attack immediately after switching to hammer stance, you can get a melee attack from long range, proccing your passive bonus damage. That is what it looks like when you cancel your auto attack animation into your Q. We'll go into animation cancelling next. Animation cancelling is when you use a skill, movement command, item active, or other technique to end an animation early in order to use another skill or movement before you would be able to otherwise. Jace can use some of his skills to cancel basic attack animations, and he can also use movement commands to cancel his knockback animation. This is cancelling your auto attack animation into melee queue. This is cancelling your auto attack animation into cannon queue. This is cancelling your auto animation into knockback. This is probably the most common one you'll see. It's very effective and you can use it a lot. Now watch this Amumu fail. Now this is where the animation cancelling gets complicated. You can cancel your knockback with a movement command in order to get a shock blast out faster. If you do this quick enough, your shock blast cannot be dodged as your enemy will just be regaining control after the knockback. This is without the animation cancel. This is with the animation cancel. See the difference? I'll play them again. This is without the cancel. And this is with the cancel. Let's slow it down. Watch for the right click movement commands during the knockback animation. That is the key to canceling it early and getting your shock blast out faster. Input buffering is a huge concept of its own. Body Tags, another YouTuber, has some great videos explaining how input buffering works. I highly recommend you check them out if you're unfamiliar with the concepts. I'll post a link to his channel in the description. Jace can buffer his melee Q with Flash. If you cast Q while out of range, and then Flash into range, it will cast instantly. Just be sure not to cancel the buffer with a basic attack or movement command. This is what it looks like when you flash, and then use your Q. And this is what it looks like when you buffer your Q with your flash. You can buffer your knockback while out of range so that it casts instantly once the target gets into range. To maintain the buffer while trying to do other things like fighting, farming, or attacking a tower requires some ridiculous mechanics. This technique gains more attention to the highly skilled Vayne players who master buffering her Condemn. Again, I urge you to watch Body Tag's videos on this concept, as it will explain it much better than I do.
You've all seen highlights of Lee Sin, Ari, Shen, Gragas, and others using their abilities and then flashing for the surprise factor and the style points. Well, Jace can do it too. Bonus tip, your knockback will reduce the armor on the scuttle crab so you can kill it faster. Here's some more wall jumping techniques. You're going to want to locate your target champion's only key. By default, this is bound to the tilde key to the left of the number one. Either get used to using this or rebind it to a place that's more comfortable. This will prevent you from attacking the monsters while trying to set up a jump. And that wraps it up for this video. Thanks for watching and hopefully you learned some cool things about the Defender of Tomorrow. If you want to learn even more about Jace, like runes and masteries, build orders, and matchups, head over to the Jace main subreddit and read the guides there. Let's end with a clip of Jace completely deleting an 80 carry. <laughs>